Uh, good to see you, Damo, as we get ready for a massive final series. Yeah, him. g'day, Jim. And we'll start, uh, unfortunately, uh, with the negatives because there's oh, a few more of those to, to wade through. And uh, a number one negative, I think, out of the, the round was what's happening at Brisbane Lions, form-wise. But more so with what Dane Zorko said to Harrison Petty on the, on the Friday night game. And look, we chose as a station, Jim, didn't we, on the Saturday, yeah. to, to not go near what he said. We don't need to. But I see others I, didn't. Yeah. No, others haven't done that. And look, that's, that's their, their, their call on that. But, but it was obviously a disgraceful, um, disgusting comment. That, and one that... I still feel slightly uneasy with that there hasn't been more commentary from the official parts of the game, even the Brisbane Lions. I know, I know they put out the statement on Saturday, but to me it wasn't that strong. I would have liked to, to have seen Dane Zorko himself, front cameras, to, to just uh, basically admit what he did was very wrong and, and to say something about it. And I haven't heard from the AFL PA yet either. I mean, they, they regularly and, and rightly make comment about other behaviour in the game and around the game about players on, on all sorts of levels and issues. And I haven't heard anything as we uh, as we speak on this Monday afternoon um, since the Friday night incident about one of their own. Oh, I'm with you. I think he can consider himself very fortunate to be playing around one of the finals, to be honest. It's a despicable thing to say. So why, yeah. Damo, why wouldn't the AFL pick that up? And Bill, they chose Bill, and, and I can get why they, they did choose to do it this way. They Once Harrison Petty was accepting of the apology and, and then made it pretty clear to people at Melbourne that he, he was happy for it to stay there and then, that, that the apology publicly from, from Dane was, was sufficient right. enough for him to move on. Yeah, so that's purple, the reason for it. I, no, I get that. But yeah. if an Indigenous player is racially vilified on the ground and then is that visibly upset at three-quarter time. It doesn't matter at the end of the game if he turns around and says to the club, I don't mm. want this going any further. The AFL step mm. in and say, yes. we, we'll decide what happens here. And a, a sanction would have been handed out immediately. So I don't yeah. buy that. No, and, and, and look, it would have been a different policy. It would have been the respect and responsibility framework around which something could have been done. But yeah, look, they, they would have had, and, and do still, and they're not going to take it, scope to act on it under their own operations. But... They've chosen not to, and they're not going to do it now, given it is now the Monday after the, the Friday uh, night incident. Okay, so does he remain captain of Brisbane? Like, the first, round one next year, after that, can he be you know, the captain of an AFL club? No, and, and, and I get why they are sticking with him in that role for this particular week. They've now got a, uh, an elimination um, series yep. of matches, provided they get past their first one, which... They better I win that, they, time, oh, Christ. It's going to be problematic, Bill. I yeah. mean, they, they've got Richmond, who, who is, is hitting the, the September part of the season in, in really, really ripping form. And yep. they know that they've got a game that can be Ooh. taken anywhere. And, and what Brisbane has, and, and most recently did dish up against Melbourne, it was a mile off. To be 11 goals down against Melbourne by half time of that game on, on Friday, when, when they had their own finals chances at stake in the game. It was, uh, it was just a different um, different level of football. All right, so how were the finals allocated? Because I must admit, I just said to Fat before, Geelong, Collingwood, Saturday afternoon, evening-ish. That is a very interesting allocation of a final to me. I would have thought that had to be either yeah. Thursday or Friday night. Having eagerly waited for these uh, matchups, Jim, uh, after the completion of a Sunday match in round 23, I I've, I've learned to not sort of preempt and even sort of de delve too deep after. I've got a theory, though, that the concussion suffered by Tom Papley for the Swans yesterday, um, the concussion protocols he now needs to serve, that would have precluded him from playing a Thursday night final. Ooh. So you push it back a day, you notice that Sydney's scheduled to play on the Friday night. I'm just putting two and two together here, Jim. It might be getting five or six, but he wouldn't have been able to play if it was a Thursday night game. And that would have then changed the, the order of uh, the other games after oh, that Thursday night. Interesting, Damo. Geelong Collingwood, should it be at GMHBA Stadium? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm I'm actually Fair in the minority. With, I'm with you on this even as a general rule, Bill. They're, they're even laughing at you. They're even laughing here <laughs> at the Delatoid. <laughs> it, it is uh, unfortunate, though, that they, they do finish two games plus a lot of percentage clear of the entirety oh, of the remainder mate. of the competition. And their, their reward is to play a, a final at the home ground of the team <laughs> that finished fourth. But, look, this year with the renovations at, at GMHBA Stadium. There's a Stadium, massive great big hole yeah. at one end. Yeah. It's all right. Not this year, Bill. 22,000 Geelong supporters. No <laughs> Collingwood. It'd be magnificent. I'll tell you what it's <laughs> taken this long to get out of fat too, Dame. I don't know if you've noticed, is uh, Geelong have had the softest draw of any team in the last 20 years. They've played one team in the top eight twice, and that's the Western Bulldogs. One. And wow. they've won. One. Every, they've and beaten every top eight side. One. And, and the Western Bulldogs only just got back into the top eight yeah, on, the, on exactly. the second so last match of the year. It actually could so. have been that they didn't play any of the top eight twice in the whole twice. season.
So you've been smooched on the prune. Oh. And so sucked in, you're not getting <laughs> where, your own Where pie. did North Melbourne end up, yeah, by the way? Yeah. Keep going, Purple. What else <laughs> are we doing? Uh, let's have a quick look at, at, at Essendon under this negative part of what we do yes. on the wrap-up of, of Monday. Yeah. Um, David Barr, I mean, you know oh. my views on this, Jim. It was this time last week where this story just absolutely took off when they, as a board, had met for the second time inside 24 hours and, and couldn't make the call on Ben Rutten. I feel they embarrassed him. They, uh, they, they didn't allow him to have any dignity in the lead-up to that final game oh. Saturday night against Richmond sacked him on, on Sunday. And then you have David Barham, who's got his own issues with his own board members not being totally behind him after the sacking, uh, making this comment. We think we're after a more experienced coach. We think a more experienced coach might be able to get more out of this list. And we, we want to give our list the best chance. So that limits them immensely. And, and, and I raise that, Jim and, and Bill, because if you look at the finalists in 2022, each coach of those eight teams was an untried coach at the time of taking over that role. So yep. for David Barham to say, we think we need an experienced coach, well, I don't know what that means by way of opening the field up and to canvassing all potential Ross. relevant and valid possibilities for what they now need. Ross Lyon or someone like that, obviously, that's what he's talking about. Yeah, but Ross Lyon made some pretty strong comments too. And, and we saw Alistair Clarkson, who was in that category of pr proven coach, didn't want to bar the job the moment that he was made aware of uh, Kevin Sheedy's uh, comments publicly. And Ke Kevin Sheedy, guys, is is driving this James Hurd back to Essendon project as hard uh -oh. as he possibly can. And it's um, it's got some numbers uh, behind the scenes, but, but again, there's pushback from the board itself as to that being done without proper consideration. Blues, last four. They've oh. lost six of the last yeah. seven. The last two... In heartbreaking but disappointing fashion. And also, uh, first time they're out of the top eight was yesterday at five o'clock or six. Yeah. 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 Th th thank you, Bill. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Um, it's been a very disappointing finish to the season. Oh, it has, Jim. And, and as much as we celebrated the return to football of, of Charlie Curnow and, and confirming uh, even before the game started yesterday that he was the Coleman medalist of 2022, but for him to kick... Two goals, five, and, and to have another shot at goal that fell remarkably short, um, it, it's on him. It, it's on Harry Mackay, two goals, three. It's on, unfortunately, for Corey Durden, who had a good year, but, mm. but didn't take the option that he, that he had late in the game just to allow Mackay or someone else to have well, a shot at goal well, when they just needed always, a point. That was always the previous week. It was, oh, it was, it was Durden, Durden yesterday. Durden, yeah, it was Durden yesterday. Where was he kicking it, that? <clears throat> Well, they I don't know where McCoy. he kicked. He kicked it straight to uh, to Jeremy Howe with, with no Carlton player around him. I mean, even prior to that, though, before the Jamie Elliott goal, um, Kurnow had, had, again, taken the similar option to go long when mm. he had shorter options at that stage and are in front at that stage. So, so they, they blew it up themselves. They did it the previous week as well. And, and I, I can't imagine what that's going to be like for that club oh, yeah. before it plays another game of football in March well, next they year. They did make giant strides, but the last six to seven weeks are very, very disappointing. Oh. The game in Adelaide three weeks ago was a train wreck. Oh, the Melbourne that was the one, one that cost them. Yeah. Yeah. Right, Melbourne. let's get to a break because we've now got some positives. I'll tell you what, I've got a positive. I like Collingwood. I'm just whispering it. Oh, no. <laughs> More uh, thanks, thanks for the news flash. Yeah. Uh, Next, <laughs> on the rush hour, live from the Dalatite Hotel in Mansfield. All thanks to our van, RV. A local <laughs> quiz about Mansfield and other stuff, according to Bill. Not too far away, but as we march towards the finals, Damien Barrett is still no, on the show. Speaking of which, yeah. Chemist Warehouse, Jim. Yes. The real house of fragrance. That's uh, what we need here today. Oh, well, thank with you, you, Bill. Well, you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I thought I saw, well, I can't be sure, Who? but I thought I saw Gary Warren from Nary Warren. He did. He's here, the dude nut. <laughs> Where is he? The centrefold. <laughs> the centrefold. He's over here somewhere. I saw him. <laughs> Rabs his sisters here. Oh, and Rabs all her brought kids. his whole uh, bloody extended family in here, Pebble. Yes. Now, Bo let's, Christopher. let's get positive, and uh, yep. you can't help but be positive about Collingwood. No, you can't because they played the, the second last of 198 uh, games of home and home footy yesterday, didn't they, Jim? Uh, you called it for, for Channel 7, obviously. And yep. it, it was as good a game as you'd ever see. And, and it basically and effectively capped, I think, one of the great home and away seasons, didn't it? The way yep. it unfolded. Uh, there's been so many highlights out of this year and, and people sometimes get caught up in the, the stand rule and the 666. I, I reckon it's all added to the, the theatre and, and we got that type of game yesterday. Jamie Elliott, um, it's, I, know, I know he's been talked about a lot, but, but he is a Colin hero, isn't he? Yes. With what he did against Essendon yep. to kick that goal after the siren. And then those two moments in the last quarter, the, the, the big hanger, yep. um, the composure to go back, kick the goal, and then the moment he had late in the piece where, where Ginevan covered for him with Saad, and then just take the moment on. I mean, if you have a look back at that goal, it, it's a very good goal oh, that yeah, he kicked. Yeah. And there's going to be no uh, point of return for him had he missed, because he had an option with Ginevan on the inside of him. But I'm, I'm just wrapped he took the, took the moment, seized the moment, kicked yep. the goal, and he's been as important as anyone, hasn't he?
Benny when it's all said and done. Oh, he's good. Brilliant. Finishes well. He's a star. Absolute star. Speaking of stars I'd... in the making. Whoa. Sam Darcy. Yes. The Duke. Yeah. Now, we don't yeah. like saying too many nice things because it's Duke. Yeah. But his yeah. young bloke's a ripper kid and, geez, he's got some talent. Third game of footy and, and to now be presenting as a, as a marking option up forward and then, more importantly, a goal-kicking option after the mark. He kicked two in that game the, uh, the other day against Hawthorne yesterday and, and it was pretty crucial because the first of the two, they were two or three goals down at that stage and it was potentially getting away from them. But... To be doing that in, in his third game where he, he hadn't played footy for effectively as a kid, school kid, for the two years of the COVID, yeah, yeah. it'd be six or seven games in those two years, to come into the system um, the way he has, to be given a game after two months of VFL form, and to now come into the team uh, for the past, the last three matches of the home and away season where they, they won the two to get in. I think he's going to be as dangerous as anyone on the ground for the Western Bulldogs' chances against Fremantle in that elimination final on Saturday night. I love him. And Tom Lynch, yeah. uh, geez, he's in some form, isn't he? Yeah, so the, the, the string of goals he's got now, Bill, four, four, eight, and five. Right. And all clear to go in the qualifying final. When it's, sure? uh, sorry, the uh, elimination sure? final. When it's, you sure? Yeah, <laughs> it's all precautionary. Um, no, I, Damo, have you had a groin injury? Bill, it was all precautionary, all clear, all systems Bill go. Bill had one for the last we'll three years of his career. I couldn't move. <laughs> I couldn't move. No, let me tell you, they're no good. They are hard no, to but get he, rid doesn't, of. he hasn't got one, Bill. He hasn't got one. So why so is he he's, icing his groin? Because he'd kicked five goals. They didn't need him anymore. All he could have done was properly get hurt. So they got him off the ground. He went through. Look, he did have some scans, to, to your point. But they're, they're all clear. And he's right to go. Right. And the, the exciting thing is the potential of Dusty Martin to come back into that team as well for that game. Sydney and Freo, sometimes you just got to tick the box final round. Yeah, you do. Uh, Franklin also kicking 50 goals again. Yep. Uh, people want to say that he's not the buddy that he once was. And that's obvious. But he's still... Still a very, very important part of what they're about to do. And yep. the fact they've got the doubles chance last year, missed it last year in the last round, got it this year. Um, I still think they're a, as live a premiership hope as, as any of the big uh, teams and players in this. And, and Fremantle too. And, and again, it wasn't his best game this year, Andrew Brayshaw. But, but he and Caleb Sarong just worked their way through some, some, um, some ordinary patches of, of form for their team against GWS just to get them the result to, to, you know, to allow them to go into the finals with some confidence because they've changed their game up again the past three weeks, the Dockers, and they got away from that. But uh, they're, they're in good form. They're in good form, but they will be worried about what they do face, that being the, the Western Bulldogs. Who does win the Brownlow? Uh, Clary Oliver for me. Clary oh, Oliver. I would hope it's Oliver, yeah. Lockie yeah. Neal's dropped off the last three, hasn't he? You'd think he would drop off in the last three. Um, that, that Because it, because the, certainly the last two, Billy, who wouldn't have polled. Um, just repeating here that uh, Adam Kingsley, you know, I say repeating, Tom Brown is reporting and others Tom reporting Brown, Tom that Brown. Tom Brown, that Adam Kingsley has agreed to a three year deal to coach the GWS really? Giants. Adam yeah. Kingsley to the Giants. Wow. So where does that Adam leave the, the Albani- Albanian flyer, Adam the Use? Yeah. It leaves him um, yes, needing to do some um, some good work with, uh, with what he's uh, got at, at Melbourne there. So, yeah, Jeez. that, that, that is. Um, yeah, that, that was, uh, that's a bit of a surprise. I mean, we did get some yeah. talk yesterday that Kingsley was still in the race, but most of the talk had been that it was, was Uze. So uh, right. Kingsley to be the coach of the GWS um, Giants there, according going, to Tom Brown. Well done. Positives, uh, Connor Rosie. Yeah, talking of Brownlow, I, I can't see why he won't be in the, uh, in the leaderboard for, for a long way. Mm. Maybe the slow start that, that he and his club had at, at a 0-5 and five start to the year. But now that he's um, – now that once they got going, he, he's um, had a really good year. I, I think he's going to be up in the top five, Jim. Um, yeah, he's certainly in the yep. top five of the coaches' votes. And he could just be the player because it took Ollie Wines, last year's winner, to get, uh, to get his form going this year. Did you see Tom Hawkins run out onto the ground, ready to run through the banner, and didn't have his jumper? What's that about? <laughs> what? Take us through oh. that, Bill. Where's he at, Hawk? Mate, he runs out onto the ground. No, in jumper a pl- on. No, didn't have a jumper. What's going You're on? You're his mate, Bill. Yeah, I don't know. He's a farmer. He might have got kicked or something. I don't know. I don't know what happened to him. <laughs> but that is dopey, isn't it? Well, of Big course dopey, it's dopey. Tom. So then he had to run, run back off. in, get a jumper on, and then run out. I would have thought your jumper's reasonably important. Yeah. Yeah, and, and just you are a good mate of, uh, of Tom Hawkins, Bill. You're, just, you're one of the positives out of the, uh, the weekend, well, too. Really? With, um, what? Well, you've booked yourself a holiday to Bali That's with, true. Your, with, with Joey with Montagna. Girl, Fiji. 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 Yeah, Fiji. Get that yeah. right, yep. Tom Brown, yeah. Tom Brown. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, have you? Damo. You've now made it a public... Uh, no, uh, it's public. Public girlfriend yeah. situation no, no, no. you're in now, Bill. No. That's and that's good. A... Everyone here in Mansfield's <laughs> enjoying it. The fact that Bill's uh, romantically inclined. We, I'm on a golf trip with Joey. Oh. 
going on and, a golf trip and, with Joey. That's it. Just and, Joey and I, and, and we're going and, to Fiji. That's it. No, I That's like it, it too, Dave. Yeah, I think it's it's yeah. softened him because we're has. worried he's, about him for a long time. He was dormant. Yeah. He's dormant. Giddy. He's giddy because he has to shut up. No, that's it. We should I, shut I, up. <laughs> as we said on Saturday, though, Jim, I, I just really worry for poor old Erin Montagna, no, who, no. who has to subject herself to the, the double dating that's yep. been going on. Yeah, no, it's it's a third wheel. Yeah. Now, she, um, uh, bus. Yeah, oh, bus. here we go, the bus. Yeah. We haven't had it for a while, don't we? Geez, that's sounding no, bad, that bus. We, we, no, it is, but we're, we're getting them all back. We're, we're getting them all back. What, yeah, the whole we're, we're, fleet? We'll get one up the, the highway to, to Brisbane. I just need yes. to uh, see what's going on up there. And if they go out in the first uh, final, look out up there with the Dane, Dane Zorko backdrop. Yes. But um, all other buses, though, Jim, every single one we've got heading down to uh, toward Tullamarine Marine to see what's going on. At the hangar. At the, uh, at the hangar and to see what Kevin Sheedy's up to because he's up to something mm, quite wow. large, even at, uh, at this latey stage of his high-end involvement uh, in football. Uh, wow. Thank Damien Barrett, everybody. Yes. Uh, number one newsbreaker in football like like that. Oh, speaking of football, who have we got coming up? Craig Kelly, Josh Fraser from the Collingwood Chad Football Morgan. Club as well. Chad Morgan. And a locals quiz. It's All the right. Rush Hour live from the Dallatide Hotel in Mansfield. Each stay and play at the Dallatide Hotel, heart of the high country.